Um, the first half you missed the layup. Your face kind of, sorry, your face kind of set it all frustrating down by as many as 17, down by 13 and a half. What, what flipped for you guys? Uh, we just had to just kind of gain some composure a little bit. Um, obviously, it wasn't the way we wanted to start off. Um, I feel like I had a lot to count for as far as, you know, I let some guys get some shots up and I was standing a little bit, but, you know, it's such a long game and, and we never, we never going to quit. And that was one thing that we uh, preached in the timeout was just, Staying together, understanding that there's no 20 point plays, um, and just chipping away every single four minutes. And to one the second half, I think you went for 14, and I think you finished with eight assists, no turnovers. What did coach say something to you at halftime? Or it seems when you, when you're playing well, this team's kind of on a different level. Um, no, he really didn't say no. We was really talking about defense in the second half, and uh, I just I just needed to be aggressive. I knew that, and I had the opportunity to get driving driving lanes, and my teammates found me too. So. All the credit goes to my teammates too. I think Grady, it's, it's one game, um, but it's a big game. What does this mean for the race? And the, as you guys kind of wind down this season to win a game like this after being down by 17? Yeah, it's huge. Obviously, we knew you know coming into it, it's kind of the three um, racing for this you know one spot, and so to kind of you know get a win here was you know super big for us, and it kind of pushes us to you know prepare for TCU. Jalen, after the miss layup, you ripped off your shooting sleeve. Was that just frustration? Was that? You know, I just had to see something different. Uh, obviously, what I was doing wasn't working at that time, so I just threw it off just to kind of just release a little bit of anger, and you know, ended up working. So it's cool. For Juan and Jalen, we've seen it. We know what you guys are capable of, and, and you do this. But but even this one, do you do you get to the point where you guys have trouble believing that that you do this? I mean, not believing in yourselves, but believing that it can be possible after a half like that. Um, I always believe this, just because, you know, from what I saw last year, being down at the biggest stage, you know, college basketball and seeing that fight, I just understood that the game is so long, like 20 minutes and down, what, 13, 15 is, uh, may seem like a lot in the moment, but if you can just win every single four minutes, um, you know, that puts yourself, you put yourself in a better situation. And, uh, and I'll never, never think that we're counted out, especially in the field house. I mean, uh, once again, our fans ride together with us to get that win. So, you know, in a place like this, I feel like anything is possible. Uh, yeah, but Jay will say, yeah, really our fans gave us that energy too in the second half. You know, we got stops too, and then the offense came by itself. And, you know, we keep getting stops like that. You know, we just play against one of the three best guards in the uh, country too. So, that, you know, we can learn from that against TCU on Monday because they got some good guards too, and we just got to take that forward. Grady, you, you weren't here last year. You, you weren't there in New Orleans when they did that. How has that rubbed off on you and the younger guys? How, how does their belief and, and what they think is possible, no matter how it looks, how, how has that become a thing for you guys, too? Yeah, just seeing, obviously, watching the game, um, the championship, um, just seeing what they were you know, doing and how they come out at halftime, you know, don't quit. Um, that's what was you know, exciting when you know, I um, decided to commit because I knew I was coming to a team that I um, never gave up, and you know, no matter what's going on, we're always going to um, keep pushing, and you know, that's what we did tonight. And, and Jalen, for you about Dewan in the second half, I mean, one shot the first half, he shoots the first shot of the second half. How big is him? Is his offense for you guys? We've talked about it, but today that seemed to really kind of spark it too. Yeah, you know, it's everything we need. You know, he's the, the forward runner out there, but he can also get by guys and, and score, and that's exactly what we need. And for him to get that effort on defense and just continue to – to do that on offense, I mean, that's just the all-around guy that, that you want to have controlling the game at point guard. So we, we know that, that uh, we know what we want Juan to do, and Juan knows that we need him to score. And, you know, he's a leader on this team, and when he's playing like that, it takes our team to a whole other level. Dewan, you talked about you guys were mentioning defense in the locker room at halftime. What was the biggest difference in the first half and second half defensively to you? Uh, really, Coach made me and Cass stay on their best two guards and not switch off of them, and then we just had to lock down. And then, Everybody else did their job by rebounding, and we just took the big two best guards off the game, and that basically was the job. Jalen, can you go ahead? You're fine. Uh, Jalen, can you talk a little bit about how the, the court opens up for you when he wants aggressive, especially as he was in the second half? I mean, he's such a great passer, so uh, I think a lot of the team, teams are assuming that he's just going to drive to the paint and, and kick out. So you know, when he's when he's finishing at the cup. Kind of makes teams, you know, now move forward in his direction when he's in the paint, and you know we got to do a better job of cutting when he drives. But you know, when he's aggressive, when he's getting to the cup. You know, they're, they're gonna have to guard him uh, tight, and that's when we get open slots and open drives to, to get to the rim. You guys don't do a ton of isolation type stuff, but it seemed like early in that half, 
um, there was a priority of attacking mismatches, kind of, and then also throwing it to you in the mid post. Um, what was kind of the, the thought process was instruction to you there um, when you got the ball? Uh, just to, to not, you know, settle. I think uh, in the beginning of the game, we took our jumpers and uh, realizing that we have size, the size advantage. You know, they have the quickness of the small guards, but we have bigger guards that can that can post up and uh, just trying to create some contact, some uh, some fouls, get to the free throw line, get the game going, and uh, you know, because it's not going to be one on the perimeter with a team that can that can shoot like that. You know, we're going to have to create contact and get to the paint. And uh, I think when we kind of flipped that switch was when we our offense got a little bit uh, more efficient. You mentioned not switching off of, of those two guards, but was there any other further instruction on? on how to deal with them? Uh, guard a three point line. You know, the first half they was making all the thing. They went like nine for fourteen for three in the first half. So we just wanted to. We had to start hedging the ball screen. We started trapping too. So it was coach did an uh, amazing adjustment, and we just followed followed beyond. Them. Juan, did you see CB, and what did he say to you after the game? Uh, he just gave, he just shook my hand, and I mean that was basically it. You know. That's my brother, Amy. You don't gotta say too much because we already got that bond and that connection. So, but I'm gonna see him after we get done with this. So we had probably spend a weekend with him too. Jalen, I know you've talked about anybody can answer this question. I know you said Baylor was probably gonna be the biggest game as of right now. You have a big one against TCU on Monday. But what is a 30 point half, and what does this kind of do for this team moving forward? Obviously, with a couple games left, the Big 12 schedule. I think it just gives a lot of a lot of the momentum for Monday. Um, uh, we're playing a team that, that came in here and beat us by 20, 30 points. And, uh, you know, it's another opportunity to get some payback on the team that, that got us in the, in the past. So it's going to be important to uh, to play them kind of like the same we played today. You know, they got a lot of good guards, but uh, they're really athletic, fast, and, tra and in transition. So uh, it was good to get that second half rolling and uh, going forward to, to handle business. I have a quick question just for you. Jalen and Grady, uh, Holly Rowe was up in the stands talking to your moms uh, about basketball. And what does that mean to both of you guys? Um, and also just to see your moms get some attention today. Probably people that don't know a lot about you guys don't realize that both of your moms are such basketball stars themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, special because it's obviously my mom. So um, when I'm seeing highlights and stuff, I make a basket or something, it always goes to her and my dad. So. Uh, she's having a, she's been having a ton of uh, TV time, but yeah, when, you know Holly, you know, texts us and get pictures and information from. Um, what about you, when Jaylen? She back I think it's great. Um, you know, I think the moms are, uh, you know, overlooked as far as you know how much they impacted our lives on the court. And uh, I know I'm blessed to have a strong mother that I, I look to for a lot of things on and off the court. So uh, it's great to for some people to realize that you know some of my talents didn't all come from my dad. You know, my mom my mom played too, so it, it's cool. Jalen, can, can you put into words how difficult it is to maybe stay composed? Uh, you come out in the second half, you want to go. We can see it in your face. We can see it in the way you play. Is, is it hard to, to bottle that up and, and stay you know, un, within yourself, I guess, when you're trying to push, push, push to come back like that? Uh, it's just part of being mature. Um, you know, that was one thing that, that I learned throughout you know, my entire time here is that when you're down, there's no plays that one play that's going to bring you back with a double digit. Um, there's no double digit plays, you know. You gotta come back with every single four minutes and it's also not gonna start by making shots, it's gonna start by getting stops. And uh, you know, that whole second half, my mindset was just to get stops and rebound. And I feel like when you have your, your mind on the right things, uh, the offensive end just comes so much more easier. So I just kind of the flip of the mind switch and, and understanding that uh, you know, this is all gonna be one on the defensive end. Anything else? Thanks, Paul. Yes,